In this video, I'm going to be replacing the rear hatch lift supports on this 1997 Camaro RS. You know what the RS stands for, don't you? Real Cello. Okay, we're going to be replacing the old shock with these that I got from rockauto.com, the Monroe 901-032. Replacing them is not that difficult, although it can be just a little bit tricky. Okay, we've got to get the bolt out of the shock. In order to get that, we have to peel back this plastic piece, and I'm just going to go ahead and pull this panel off. There are two little clips that go into the right here. Just want to peel that back. That might just give us a little bit of room. There's a rubber boot that goes around the bottom of the shock. We'll just move that up. You can see that goes around the bottom. What we've got here is a T50 Torx. I'm going to put that in this bolt. It should break that loose for us. I want to be extra careful not to break this piece of plastic trim right there. Now I'm just going to use my socket to get it out. What? Okay, fine, fine. I'm cool. I'm fine. Well, that stinks. All right, I'm just gonna sit in the back seat and give myself a little more leverage and angle. Come on. One eternity later. All right, I've been at this for a little while now, and I'm about ready to pull my hair out because the teeth on this Torx bit are stripping out and my socket keeps flying out of here while I'm trying to do it. And I've hit this weather stripping about seven times and I've torn it and I've gotten into this. So that aggravates me more than just about anything where this thing is just so tight. But I finally got it turned, and then I would turn it back in, and I would loosen it, and I'd put it back in, and I'd loosen it, and turn it, tighten it, and loosen it, and tighten it, and loosen it, and it's finally responding. So thank goodness. I'm going to lift up on the door and take the pressure off of it. I've got my broom handle holding the door open. Kind of fell on me a little bit, but that's finally loose. All right, as far as this other side goes, you get a screwdriver and pop this clamp out. It's a little spring clip, and then it drops off this little nipple. All right, I'm gonna get this rubber boot off. Just stretch it over the top of the shock. There we go. And then we'll just Slide it down the shock. Trying very hard not to rip it. Okay, we'll just reuse that. Again, our Monroe shock, 901-032. We'll stretch this over the top. Really don't want to rip this. It's gonna put a tiny, tiny bit of oil. Okay, that wasn't tiny. Anyway. Put a little WD-40 in there. Wipe that oil off. All right, here's the bolt, and you can see just how bad those teeth start to round out. I don't have another bolt to use to put this all back together, so I'm going to have to use this until maybe I can buy a different one. But I'm going to put some uh, anti-seize lubricant on there and uh, see if that will help in the future. And I'm not going to tighten it down super tight, so hopefully soon in the future I can replace this bolt with one that's not stripped out. All right, looking at the end of the shock, it'll go like this when it's installed. This is the outside of the car, inside of the car, interior, bolt goes in like that. Don't fumble this bolt down behind this panel because you're going to have to pull the panel off to fish it out. Just trust me on that one. Hmm. Okay, 
that's all the tighter I'm going to go with that stupid thing. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and lift up on the hatch. Okay, that just snaps into place. Okay, I'm going to get this little stirrup underneath the bolt and then tuck. Gonna make sure all this rubber seal is outside of this plastic interior trim pieces. Make sure all my tabs line up on everything. The second bolt was way easier to get out. There's definitely thread locker on there. The teeth on the Torx bolt on the driver's side was already kind of rounded. This one still looked pretty good. I put this Torx bit in there and started to wrench on it and it wanted to start to round off the teeth. And I got the bright idea to just hammer and drive it in there and got a pretty good solid connection. And I was actually able to break this loose just using my socket wrench instead of a breaker bar. So thank goodness this came out a lot easier. I'm gonna clean up these threads, put a little maybe anti-seize on that as well. there we have it everything's tucked back in all the weather stripping everything's good except for that one small casualty right there where I got into it with my Torx bit but uh, everything is tucked back in the way it's supposed to go everything looks good Put mine no hands.